Okay, we're back. So today, we're going to start file input output, or file I.O. So we have an example here that um, I'm using I.O., including I.O. stream, but also F stream. And that's, that's the include that's going to allow us to create file streams. So here, I'm creating an input file stream. That means that I'm going to be reading from this object. Now the variable name here, I'm calling it f. And um, I am also uh, specifying the file here, the file type. And the other thing that I want to tell you is that notice I can do this in a couple of different ways. I can either uh, use these two lines, lines 12 and 13, to open the file. And, or I can do it all on line 10. Personally, I think line 10 is um, looks easier. So let me show you a few different ways of reading a file. So first of all, let me show you what's in my data. So, OK. so. You can see what's in my data right here. It's just a bunch of names and some per perhaps ages associated with them separated by a space. So let's now, actually perhaps we shouldn't have closed that. Here, let's take a look at different ways of getting information or data out of that file. Here's their first example. We're going to use while get line. Now get line obviously is line delimited. And we're going to take that line and put it into F. You, if you remember correctly, before when we used get line, we would type in uh, you know, C in here, right? Um, but now the input stream object is going to be F, which is the file. And so we can print out what's in the file. Now. We could, in order to read the file again, we could close it and open it again. Now this would work properly, but I wanted to show you there's a different way of actually resetting the file pointer. Because every time we, we read something in the, in the file, the file pointer is incremented lower and lower and fi until finally it gets to the end. But by using... Um, Clear and clear basically clears the end of uh, file state flag from true to false because this is going to stop right when we get to the end of the file. So we want to clear that flag. And the other thing we want to do is we want to set the file pointer to the beginning. And that's the zero here. Okay? Uh, that's seek G. So now, so that's that's a that's a function of uh, a file object. Here's the documentation for clear. And notice uh, default value is good bit. So when we uh, don't pass anything to clear, it's simply going to use the default argument. And um, notice that it says right here that it's not going to be end of file anymore. OK? OK, so let's talk a little bit more about seekg here. Uh, this sets the where the pointer is. Notice that I'm using an offset here. So once again, going back to the documentation for here for seekg, I'm using the second one with the offset and then from where. OK, so when I now go to, let's say, my paint, OK, this is my kind of like my, my, my whiteboard. This location here is the beginning, and this location obviously, therefore, is the end. So my offset, if I am zero offset from the beginning, so if I go zero, comma, uh, f dot beg then it's going to go you know right there if i go if i want to go to the end i would go 0 
offset f dot end. And so, and you know, this is this is all for um, seek g. Okay. So looking at the code, we can see that I can either I can do it one of two ways. I can either use iOS colon colon beg or I can just use f beg, which I think is the same thing. Uh, in any case, let, long story short, this resets this uh, resets file pointer back to the top because the file pointer gets moved down as we're reading through the file. Okay, so now let's take a look at the second way in which we can read the file. The first way we read one line at a time using get line. In this one, we're going to use the uh, extraction operator and take words. Remember, the extraction operator is space delimited. So we're going to take words directly from the file and put them into the word uh, variable, which is a string on line 9. And then we'll print out the words one by one. Now notice there's going to be a difference here because this is not going to uh, have print stuff out line by line. It's going to print stuff out word by word. Again, we'll clear the, the, the state of the file and then we'll set it back to the beginning. Remember, we can do it either of two ways here. And then let's read it another way. So in this method, basically you're using the file state as a condition. So if the file if it's not, notice this is a not, end of file, then continue reading. Alternatively, you can use f.good. Now, which one of these two is better? Uh, in terms of like checking more things, f.good is better. And the reason for that is because, well, especially, especially, you know, um, if, you're, if you want to deal with things like running out of room or perhaps file corruption. Um, like, for example, let's take a look at the states in which EOF and good are true and false. Okay, so this is the, the table I wanted to show you. Notice the good bit is only true if there are no errors. What could some of the errors be? Well, if, if you're end of file, or if you have a logical input output error, or if you have a reading writing error. So any of these could cause the good bit to be false. Whereas when I'm checking for EOF, um, basically I'm um, that one is true. And so the only time that's going to be true is if I'm not at end of file. But in any case, um, either one will work if I go back to the code. I just have to change the, I just have to change, right, from not end of file to f dot good while while we're good. Basically, now I can use get line in here and I can print out the line. Okay, so in essence, I'm still reading line by line. It's just that my condition is slightly different. Okay, this is just a, a flag. So now, the last way that I wanted to show you how to read the file is one character at a time, or perhaps more than one character, we can actually change f.get. So let me just kind of give you uh, here, let's just go through it here. Again, I'm going to set the pointer back to the top of the file. Now I've created a character variable c, and I'm now going to do f.get. Now f.get, there's two kinds of forms to it. Um, I can actually use f.get like this too. I can do f.get and I can go. Um, now, if I do a variable here, so let's say, let me, let me kind of give you an example here. I go, let me, uh, how about let's go A and let's make it, um, I don't know, let's say something like 32. Okay? So now, what is A? It's a, it's a 30, to 32 characters it's a it's a it's an array of characters right 
So if I wanted to read 32 at a time, I would just go like that. So I can. So in other words, f.get is a little bit more flexible. Uh, it will allow you to read any number of bytes or any number of characters at a time. But in this example, I'm going to be reading one at a time. Okay. Let's comment this out because I'm going to get a, a compiler warning if I don't. So now I'm just going to print that character. And notice the nice thing about this is like new line characters will also be work perfectly there. So that's the end of the file. Let's run it and let's see what it looks like. So notice here on the first one, reading line by line, there's the file. Reading by words, which is space delimited, okay, that, those are the words, and the ages are on different lines. And then here I'm using EOF for good. Reading file is fine. And here I'm reading one character at a time. Okay? And just to show you, um, you know, I could change this. Uh, let's just see what would happen if I tried this. Okay, so um, we tried something and learned something. So you notice if I try using a character, a C string or a character array, I'm only going to get the first line here. And notice there it is, character reading. I'm only getting the first line because it's new line delimited. So I, th this is going to stop after the new line. So in essence, I don't think this is a good way to do this. Uh, let's just stick to reading it one character at a time. And I think that will be, because uh, we already have so many different ways of reading it. Um, we don't need yet another one. So let's just go, let's just stick to that. And now we can read it one character at a time. And that works. Okay? In any case, let's move on. Okay, so in our next example, we have a file that is going to read from a file, again, my data. But this time, after reading it, we're going to grab everything line by line, but then we're going to stick everything into a vector. And then after it's in the vector, we're going to sort it. And after sorting it, and by the way, this is going to get sorted alphabetically, okay? Because it's a it's a vector of strings, okay? And so then, now we're going to create. Notice before in the previous example, we created an input file stream. This time, we're going to create an output file stream. And now, we're going to write everything in the vector to the file. Notice how we write to the file. We use the insertion operator and we're going to insert elements from the vector one at a time into out f. Now usually this would look like a cout statement, right? But think about what cout is. Cout is an output stream. Well, so is out f, except in this case it's an output file stream, not to your console. And that's, that's, that's how you write to a file. So uh, I have like a little kind of an assignment for you. I want you to take this file, look at it, copy it, and I want you to, so just, well, let's just run it first before I tell you what the assignment is. Let's just run it first to, to see what it does, okay? Um, by the way, the new file that's going to be created is going to be called newdata.txt. So um, let's just make sure that let's just make sure that we don't have anything there. By the way, if you do, it'll get overwritten. So let's 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 take a look at my data right now. That's what's in there. And obviously, if we um, let's get rid of new data if we have it, and we do. So let's let's get rid of it. So now let's go back here and let's run it. And notice when we run it, we don't have any output to the screen. So now, let's go and see if we have the file, new data. 
and, and we do. Okay, so we that file now exists. Okay, so let's see what's in it. Notice the difference. In this case, it's Bob, Butch, Jerry, Mary, Tom. Before, it was not sorted alphabetically. So essentially, our program read everything in the file, put it into a string of vectors, sorted it, right? And we need algorithm for that. And then it iterated through the vector and put everything into a, a new file. Okay? So here's your assignment. Your assignment is, can you modify this program such that it would store the these lines um, based on now we, you might have to change the data type here from string to something else from, from vector string to something else but I'd like you to sort them based on the age so in other words Tom should sorry Jerry should come first Tom second Butch third and then Bob and then Mary right give that a shot now you can change whatever you like you can change the my suggestion in this case obviously would be um, change the change the vector to something else okay good luck pause the video now all right let's have a look at the solution so here is one possible solution for this and let's look at it so what I did is as before I c created a comparison function that returns a bool but interestingly now I'm using a pair object okay so a pair is a way of associating two objects in C++ and almost like creating an object a new object of that pair and I create now a vector of this pair string integer okay and I'm gonna call this uh, a pair vector PV and this pair P I'm just gonna call just one letter now I'm gonna well, let's take by the way before we continue let's we haven't done we haven't used pairs before so maybe we should look at the documentation so here is the C++ pair and let's take a look at what we can do with it here's an example of it now notice they're using uh, they're not using using namespace std so they're having to put this in front of everything but essentially you can make a pair like that um, you can also instantiate them in slightly different ways but you can also use make pair okay that's a that's a function that's provided also you access the first and the second element in the pair using dot first and dot second okay and there they are so it's, it's very very straightforward so let's go back to the code so you'll notice now what I do here is I do while and now I'm gonna take one word at a time remember there's space separated so the first thing I take is the name notice name is a string then I use ampersand so in other words I do do that and do this and by the way, this will only return true if both of them return true because it's an and. Now I take the age. So I can, I'm basically doing two inputs in one shot. So I'm taking both things because I know there's two things on one line, right? And it's space or a new line set delimited. Once I get those things, I put name, I assign that to p.first, which is my, just my temporary pair object and I set p dot second equal to age then I push back the p pair into my pair vector okay so now once everything is in there I can sort that vector using my compare and my comparison 
right, takes two pairs. Here's pair x, string and integer, and here is pair y, string and integer. And it returns a Boolean, but the Boolean it returns is that it's the dot second, and the dot second is obviously the integer. Okay, so I'm doing less than on the integers of the pair. Then, once that sort is done, now I want to write it to my new file. And the way I do that is I simply iterate through the vector and I write. Now, notice here I do pvx, right, because I'm iterating over the elements of the pair vector, but I go dot first first and I send that to the output file stream, which is my file, and then I do pvx second. And then, of course, I had to remember to put the new line character at the end. And so when I run this, nothing, nothing comes out because I've commented out the, uh, the second line there, the C out. But if I show you, now notice how it's sorted. Jerry, Tom, Butch, Bob, and Mary. Notice 257, 13, 33. And that's the solution.